What's good, everybody? It's another video with your boy, First Degree Sports. Tonight was WWE Survivor Series, and man, what a night in WWE history it was. So, I mean, the pay-per-view overall, I'm going to be honest, this is going to be a, probably a quick recap of the pay-per-view with Seth. It wasn't really all that crazy. I mean, you had the first women's, you know, first match of the night was the women's war games match. Team Damage Control versus Team Bianca Belair. She had Charlotte, Shotzi Blackheart, Becky Lynch on the squad, 4v4. The match was solid, had some pretty okay spots, nothing too crazy. Nothing that I would consider one of like the greatest, you know, war games matches of all time or nothing like that. But a solid little opener, you know, for for the pay-per-view overall. Then, you know, we had uh, later on, you know, we had Gunther versus The Miz. That match was, you know, not really memorable. Another defense for Gunther. His historic reign continues. The Women's World Heavyweight Championship match was decent. I was expecting a little bit more from Zoe Starks being this her first one-on-one -on -one shot at a major championship for the women's, but, you know, it was what it was. Decent little match. Rhea Ripley's gear was on fire. It was cold. It was dope. And, yeah, you know, that was pretty cool. Santos Escobar versus Dragon Lee. Nothing crazy storyline much. You know, it seems like Carlito or somebody may have suffered an injury because he was supposed to be in Dragon Lee's place. But Dragon Lee ended up, you know, taking his spot. And it turned out to be a pretty solid match. Hopefully they can go at it again when both of their storylines intertwined together is mixed in. Center case of the story. But yeah, man, other than that, you know, we had the men's main event War Games match. And that match felt very just, let's hurry up and get through it. It didn't really feel like nothing too crazy. The best part to me was Randy Orton coming out, returning after months. Of us not seeing him and coming in, hitting some of his iconic signature moves. And shout out to JD McDonough for taking that RKO off the cage in midair. Because that was a wild spot, man. And you went face planted, face first. Got hit with one of the craziest RKOs of all time. So shout out to him for that. But yeah, you know, Team Cody Rhodes ends up beating Team Judgment Day. There was a little tease of a cash-in with Rhea Ripley coming out with Damian Priest's briefcase. But, of course, it ended up not happening because, you know, the Viper, the Legend Killer, came out and did his thing. But, man, the main thing that everybody's talking about, CM Punk is back in the WWE. It's so crazy. Just, what was it, two, two years ago, three years ago, in AEW, you know, the night of Rampage. It was Rampage. Your boy was there when CM Punk came back that night. And it was insane. It was like CM Punk's return to wrestling. You know, the tides may turn. AEW's got a mega star in the building. And then, you know, years later, they kind of fumbled the bag. And Vince leaving company under new management, under new ownership. Triple H had a creative, and what do you know? Years later, CM Punk is right back in the WWE. Tony Khan, you know, talking about he feared for his life, whatever. Clearly, Triple H, nobody in the back fearing for their life. Looks like they're going to set up a big WrestleMania match between CM Punk, Seth Rollins for World Heavyweight title. Probably going to main event night one. But yeah, man, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. How was Survivor Series? What did you think of CM Punk's return? And what are you excited to see him do now that he's back in the WWE? But that was your boy, First Degree Sports. If you messed with the video, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. I'm out. Peace.